Welcome, everybody. So the exciting thing about learning alongside social entrepreneurs is that you get to make improvements to some really great ideas. Take microfinance, for example. Originally envisioned as a tool to help alleviate poverty, it was sort of a grassroots response to bank the so-called unbankable or those at the bottom of the economic pyramid who didn't have access to traditional forms of capital. Since this original um, ideation of microfinance, it's become a bit of a commercialized success story. People are making a lot of money. We're seeing return rates in 97, 98%. And that's not necessarily bad, except when you look at some of the consequences of people in poverty being trapped in a web of debt based on a, um, a model that has become largely commercialized. So um, what we can add to this complexity is that most microloans go to women. The Grameen Foundation estimates that 98% of all microloans um, dispersed in India have benefited women. But the thing is, we don't really know if they're improving women's lives. And then we also have this thing called a UN Millennium Development Goal on promoting gender equality and women's empowerment. So there's a connection here. Microfinance is largely benefiting women. We have this development goal. It's pretty much common knowledge that uh, raising the position of women and girls is going to help us save the world. However, <laughs> am I right or am I right? Thank you. <laughs> I'm not even done yet. <laughs> so the problem here is that we don't have any large-scale, standardized way of defining or measuring what it means to empower women. So I started thinking, what is women's empowerment? How are people defining it? And I looked at the UN, I looked at USAID, and I looked through all these different indicators. And then I started scanning the field of microfinance, looking at the prevailing models. And I came across an organization called Zawadisha. Uh, Zawadisha means to give a gift in Swahili. And Zawadisha's mission statement is to empower and trust and expand opportunities for women. But they're also doing micro-lending. So I partnered with Zawadisha, and I created a survey to attempt to measure uh, quality of life indicators over the life of a loan with women's empowerment as, as a focal point. And this partnership has grown from last fall into this project, which is my own co-creation of a more ambitious model that seeks to alleviate poverty, empower women, and allow for whole communities to be more adaptive to change. Now, these changes are environmental, they're social, and they're political. So what I did for this project is I helped the founder of Zawadisha create a theory of change. And a theory of change is what organizations use to articulate how they're going to bring about the change that they describe in their mission statements. It's kind of like a mission statement on steroids. So we, we first start with some goals, and then we have some strategies that map to those goals, and then some outcomes. But the really cool thing about a theory of change is that you also test your assumptions. You, um, you have to spell out the activities that will lead you to these outcomes. And um, part, it's a really comprehensive process to articulating what kind of change can come about that we can tell our story with a little more depth to potential funders. So one of our strategies is to create strong locally led lending circles, whereby relationships become the most commonly traded currency. We are also seeking to create an environment where our members can participate in decision making. They have shared ownership over not only how the organization conducts itself, but how our strategies will move forward with microlending. And the third strategy is to embed um, climate adaptation and mitigation strategies with our business, with our members to embed those into their business plans so that they're more adaptive to these changes. So what I just described is an investment in human capital. 
And an investment in human capital is not just about financial returns. It's about providing education. Now that's sustainability education, it's financial literacy. It's also self-defense in some cases, especially in conflict zones. Um, it's helping to provide access to healthcare, uh, a savings incentive whereby if you invest in our human capital model, your investment recycles over time for longer term social and environmental returns because it goes into a savings incentive for our members. And what this creates is more resilient communities. Now how we're going to measure our success is through a transformative approach where we're asking our members to tell us what they need. And this might not seem very radical to you, but um, it actually is because when uh, all of these fancy indicators are being developed, there's not a lot of conversation around uh, what, what people who are living in poverty actually need to be uplifted. So part of this shared decision-making model is that we're allowing our members' voices to be heard. Now, our goal in the next year is to add 100 new members. We can do this with $150,000. And this will fund another full-time Kenyan employee. It's very important to us that we're creating jobs within the communities that we're serving. So there's currently one Kenyan member who is uh, helping us with evaluation and helping to start these conversations. Uh, this will also fund another round of loans and some administrative capacity, i.e. give me a job. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so the current context is uh, two regions in Kenya but these are actually serving as pilots for us to test some of these assumptions that we're making about some of the large scale changes that we would like to bring about. But the model will be such that we can use it in any underserved community that needs uplifting. And what we've learned from all of this in 30 years of microfinance and the uh, emerging world of impact evaluation is that microlending alone cannot create the resilient communities that we need to create to address uh, the challenges that lie ahead. So I want to thank you for your time tonight and I also want to say that I would love for you to join me in investing in human capital because the returns will amaze you. Thank you.